Welcome to Conversation Corner. I'm your town administrator, Jack Hathaway. I'm joined today by Selectman Chairman Jim Lehan. <laughs> Morning, Jim. Morning, Jack. How are you? So far, so good. All right. Well, we're getting uh, Conversation Corner rolling again, so uh, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Um, we had a number of items we wanted to talk about. We got mm -hmm. a uh, busy fall coming up, so uh, let's get right to it. Well, I, th I thought um, first, thank you for doing this as well, Jack, but I thought maybe something you just might want to share with folks is. Uh, we had a, an interesting event happen mm. this week that uh, got a lot of publicity, <clears throat> was on the news, and um, um, every now and then the good guys win. So I thought maybe just quickly highlight it and let people know how well some of our folks performed. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Um, we had, uh, unfortunately, we've had some a series of uh, break-ins in town, um, but recently Tuesday we had uh, a break-in down in Lafayette Lane and uh, our officers were down there investigating and at about one o'clock in the afternoon we got a 911 call from a 16 year old young lady from on Cleveland Street and uh, our guys responded. Um, Eric Van Ness uh, officer responded from uh, he was doing a detail jumped in his personal truck and gave, got over to Cleveland Street real quick. Um, Detective uh, Nate Fletcher was right behind him. They went up to the residence and uh, they were able to apprehend the, the burglars at uh, mm -hmm. right at the residence and uh, at gunpoint. Um, and the young lady, I got to say, did an amazing job. She grabbed, she heard the guys coming in the house. She was homesick for the day. I know. Went yeah. down the went down in the cellar and uh, called nine one one. So she she deserves the credit. Um, and our guys uh, did did their job and they did a great job at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a chance to listen to that uh, uh, nine one one call and our dispatcher was top of his game. Joe I mean, Castellano. Did a wonderful job. Wonderful he, he, job. Joe has had, uh, we've had the fortune and uh, Joe's had, I guess, the misfortune of uh, being involved in a number of uh, our bigger events and uh, Joe has has, has and, and continues to do a tremendous job. So thank you to Joe. So well, as I said, the good guys win every now and then, but um, you, you've heard me say many times how lucky we are to have the public safety folks that we have in this town, police and fire, and they, they really do a phenomenal job. And to me, what uh, one of the greatest benefits of having served on the board is to get to know them and, and see the work that they do and um, how dedicated they are. I mean, these, these guys care. Yep. And uh, anyway, we're and enough, they, we're fortunate. They, they, absolutely. And, yeah. and, you know, the, 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 the added benefit of, of, of our departments are they work so well together, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's a, a a medical emergency or a, a situation like this, um, you know, our, our two, we call them the red team and the blue team. The two teams work so well together, we call them the purple team. Um, <laughs> you know, other towns, the, the police folks won't talk to the fire folks, yeah. um, you know, in some towns. And uh, so we are really, benef you know, we benefit from a great team. And I got to say, uh, Charlotte Jovanella, uh, on the, on one of our firefighters uh, and, and uh, paramedics, um, she sat with the young lady after this incident. Obviously, she was shook up, and uh, Charlotte did a great job of, uh, you know, getting her back to yeah. calm down. And uh, and so, our, it's we are fortunate to have teams that work well together. And well, it's a peaceful town, and but we do have things that happen. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, we're fortunate to have these guys. Well, we we wanted to take advantage of this opportunity just to kind of update folks on some of the things that are going on. Uh, we we like to do this periodically. Hopefully, you find it of value because. Uh, with the strict components now of our meeting agendas, we, we can't vary too much from what we put on the agenda <laughs> anymore under the open meeting laws, uh, and that's a good thing. Uh, but we don't get a chance to, to really kind of just share information with people to the extent that we'd like to, so hopefully you'll find this of value. One of the things I thought we could talk about, Jack, we've come through um, uh, six, really, I was going to say five, but really six very, very difficult years financially. Um, mm -hmm. Every town has, the entire state, the country has. I mean, we've literally had some very difficult times, and we've survived it pretty well. In fact, uh, we've actually survived it quite well. And uh, 
we recently got some news regarding some of our financials that uh, I thought would be important to share with folks. So why don't you tell them a little bit about our free cash? Sure. Um, every year we have a, a process of closing the books. Our, our accountant does that for us, um, Julie Shefko. And uh, through that process, we, we calculate what, what is called free cash. And free cash is really kind of our savings account. Um, it's uh, the reserves that we have available that, that town meeting can then save or spend. Um, and it's generated by you know, taking last year's free cash, adding in uh, any unanticipated revenues that we didn't budget for. So um, you know, we're always very conservative with our revenues so that we don't end up with a shortfall at the end of the year. So she adds those in. Um, any budget money that's left over at the end of the year from the department's uh, not spending to the limit, which uh, um, you know, we generated about four hundred thousand dollars of savings in our budgets this year, um, and then it, one kind of in additional one-time revenues that may come in. And this year we had the sale of the house on uh, Boardman Street. Uh, we had some building permit revenue come in from uh, both from the Freeman Kennedy School, and then especially from the solar field. Mm -hmm. um, so. We are very fortunate to have uh, what I think is the highest free cash that we've ever had is uh, just over $1.1 million. Right. So that is uh, great news. So uh, what do you think we should do with that, Jim? <laughs> well, I know what other people will want to <laughs> do with it, which is called spend it. Um, one, the uh, free cash that Jack refers to, we have also what we call our stabilization fund, which is our reserves that we have in our town. Uh, we have not deposited nor have we withdrawn from those uh, from that fund for I think 2003 mm -hmm. is, is the last time we've had any activity on that. Um, we don't have a ton of money in there, a little under $700,000, but we through this entire difficult period that we've gone through, we have not made any withdrawals from that, and that has helped us. The reason uh, that we watch this carefully is that this impacts our bond rating. You've heard me talk about this before, but you know it's one of my passions, I guess, because it's where I spent a lot of my years in the private world. Uh, Mm -hmm. dealing with these folks but a bond rating is really important to us because we are constantly borrowing money um, not necessarily new sources but rolling up old sources refinancing things of that nature and the bond rating indicates the uh, uh, interest rates that we pay and the better our rating obviously the lower the rates we pay and it, it saves substantial amounts of money for us in terms of uh, our financing uh, a lot of money as it relates to the school because during these last five or six years when we were as strained as we were, we still managed to get upgraded. One of, I think, only a half a dozen towns in the state that was, up, was upgraded. But we haven't made any deposits to, to, the, to the savings account. So uh, we're going to be bringing forward uh, November 29th, I think, if I hope yep. I got the right date, is our uh, fall town meeting. We will be bringing forward a warrant article uh, for the town's approval, and I, I hope you will agree that we want to put some of this $1.1 million that we've managed to accumulate into the stabilization fund to build up our reserves. Um, we are frequently reviewed by S&P, and uh, we think that, one, it will certainly enable us to maintain the rating we have and possibly uh, maybe even get a little bit of a bump, yep. uh, which will, again, increase our opportunities for financing at lower rates. So we're going to bring a Warren article to put a half a million dollars into the stabilization fund. Um, first time we've made a deposit in a long time. Um, we know we've got a lot still, we've, we've been very thin on some of our capital needs. We really haven't had any capital money to spend, uh, any meaningful money to spend in the last few years. Um, capital money comes from two sources. It comes from prison mitigation funds, which last year I think we got $86,000. Correct. Uh, Representative Winslow is more optimistic this year, and he thinks the number will be back up into the six figures. Um, we will know in due time. We've mm -hmm. gone as close as two weeks of getting the check and found out we didn't have anything. So. Uh, we'll believe it when it's deposited, but we're optimistic. Uh, and we'll devote some of this free cash to capital. So we've reinstituted what's known as the Capital Outlay Committee, a, a group of volunteers that uh, get together and uh, basically play Solomon uh, to decide on how to spend what available money we have. But the good news is we will have some money. Bad news is we've got a backlog of requests. I think the latest sheet you shared with us was in the million dollar it was range. About a million dollars. So. Yeah. But, um, but the good news is we'll be able to fill some of those needs. So yeah. I mean, we definitely have you know vehicle needs as as always, and I'm sure people are tired of hearing about vehicle needs. But uh, DPW DPW in particular has some trucks that are uh, the truck that you like to talk about with 300,000 yeah. miles and never left the town of Norfolk. <laughs> that one's actually still going, but some of the smaller trucks are uh, getting a little uh, ragged. So we will bring that forward to the capital committee, and then bring that. Capital yep. committee will bring it to town meeting. Yep. So and and the good news, I guess, really just to kind of sum it up, is that uh, we're financially in pretty good shape. We are, yep. and uh, you know we hope 
<coughs> I meant to talk to you about uh, one of the comments that I heard from uh, one of the department heads, Ann Proto, the recreation director, made a comment last night that was uh, encouraging. She's, you know, she says one of the indicators that she follows with uh, as far as the economy goes is the recreation department, sure. and you know that is clearly recreation is a is a discretionary money that people spend. And she said, you know, the last five years really she's seen a, a dip in recreation programming. You know, the people signing up. And for the first time in, in five years, she's seen an up mm -hmm. increase in recreation participation. So hopefully that's, you know, one of the many indicators that we have that uh, shows that the economy is starting to rebound a little bit. Yeah. Um, clearly unemployment and all that is, uh, we've seen a good trend the last couple of months in uh, Norfolk and the area, uh, in the area. But uh, there's still, you know, there's obviously still some. Uh, more, more to be done, but <coughs> um, we, we want to just to leave, make sure that people kind of feel comfortable with where we are financially, that we've, we've come through this in pretty good shape. And uh, we've got some uh, reserves now that we think we can invest back into the town as, as well as save. So it's, yeah. it's really good news. And we Best up, we've had in a long time. Build up yeah. that reserves too. And then obviously, you know, Ben yeah. Franklin, penny, penny saved is a penny earned. And we generate more revenue if, we, if our reserves are bigger. So yeah. that's uh, all good news. And, and that's probably just a, a good lead in to, um, you've heard a lot about this, this bridge over the MBTA tracks and, and our efforts there. Um, I we, haven't we, heard about that one. You have heard about no. that? You haven't? No. It's going to be a toll bridge. <laughs> <laughs> no, but before that rumor starts, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we, we, we're constantly looking at ways to uh, increase our commercial opportunities. Uh, it, it's not the panacea for Norfolk. Uh, our opportunities are limited uh, in terms of our uh, total growth, if you will, we're about 94% residential, if I remember, 6% mm -hmm. commercial. Uh, on a good day, we might get that to 90-10, um, but, and it's a slow process. But the town's been exploring a bridge over the MBTA tracks, which would connect to Boardman Street uh, for, I think, 2004 is the first time that we actually applied for grant money. And there's been a lot of conversation around town. I, I, a number of folks have asked me about it. Uh, it is part of our master plan to try and create uh, more commercial business down around what we now used to call, anyway, the moonscape. Uh, at least now there's grass. Um, but I, I wanted to make it clear to folks that, that the way we anticipate doing this is not on the backs of the taxpayers of Norfolk. Uh, we have applied for a state grant. We've applied in the past. We've come close. We haven't gotten it. Um, we've applied again this year. We, we think we're closer. Uh, we've been told we're on the priority list. but. We should know, I think, by early November mm -hmm. whether or not we're, we're going to receive that. Representative Winslow also, uh, and, Rep and State Senator Ross, were both in, uh, instrumental in proposing some additional funding through the bond bill, which has been signed by the governor, but um, bond bills, all the aspects of the bond bill are not necessarily funded. So uh, while it's been signed and approved, it has not been uh, funded for all intents and purposes. So, we don't know quite where that stands, uh, but we have two resources of funding that we hope will come about that will allow us to pursue this development. If neither of these take place, um, we're not going to build a bridge. <laughs> yeah. you know? And if at the end of the day, even if we do receive one of these two grants, um, we still have some analysis to do in terms of the potential revenue um, because they don't pay the full price in either instance. And uh, we are not, as I said earlier, going to put this on the back of the taxpayers. So. It's, it's a work in progress. Um, we're still doing uh, the analysis on it. Uh, we're still talking to our business partners as to how this might or might not work. Uh, and we're still pursuing it. But uh, the jury's out as to whether we get it and the jury's out as to whether we do it because we, we want to make sure that it's financially solvent and that, uh, as I say, it, again, it, it doesn't fall back on the taxpayers. So I just wanted to make that clear because there's been a lot of conversation on it. Um, if we can do it with the state's money, we'll do it. And if we can get sufficient revenue to ensure that any payback we have is covered, we'll go forward. If we don't meet those two criteria, we will not. So Great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is, that is an important program for the town, as we all know. Yeah, so we're hoping that is. we'll move forward. And uh, But of course, uh, as you said, we're not going to just, yeah. we're not going to throw money at it. Well, uh, there's, no, there's no debate as to whether or not the bridge would enhance our opportunities. I, yeah. I think the, the, the positives far outweigh any negatives uh, associated with this. Uh, it will benefit the town. The, the issue is, is how long it takes to benefit the town and, and how much financial burden we have to bear, which at least in my view is none. Yep. So we, we, we have to work that all through. But talking about financials, we've talked a lot to folks about the solar fields, and people have noticed them, I'm sure, down in the landfill. Hope they have. Yeah. Um, and we shared with folks at town meeting that this was going to be a, a financially advantageous project for the town. We're kind of into it now, 
and we've got a little bit of a reading on it, so why don't you tell folks how we've done? Sure. It's uh, the uh, solar field went, up, went live on June 20th, um, so we have now have uh, about a two megawatt system up and running. It's uh, on the landfill and then some additional land behind kind of the transfer station. So you can, cl you, you can see that uh, just from the transfer station or at the end of Medway Branch, you can look and see that it, it's, you know, easily visible. There's a fence protecting it, um, but it's worked, you know, so far working great. Uh, we've got a link on the town's website, uh, virtualnorfolk.org where you can uh, click on that link and look at the, uh, the production from the solar field. Uh, shows you the, you know, as the day go progresses, how much uh, so energy is being produced. Uh, keeps track of a monthly and a, and a uh, year to date, uh, like all time as they call it, uh, time period, how much energy is produced. And I think the last time I looked, it was like 56,000 gallons of, the equivalent of 56,000 gallons of gasoline that have been produced just in the last couple of months. So four dollars a gallon—that's a lot of money. Yeah, uh, it is a lot of money. So, and and so, th how that financials uh, come back to the town are that uh, we actually pay for that production, but then we receive—we uh, get this net metering credit. So we get a credit back when we use energy, um, about eighteen cents per kilowatt. So, the the we're estimating and looking at the early bills, we're going to estimate that uh, we're going to save between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. On our electricity costs mm -hmm. um, for the town, so that's uh, yeah. it's going to be a uh, yeah, it, it's turning out to be what it what we thought, right. and uh, it's going it's working out to be a very more, successful more, project. More good news financially for the town. Yeah, that was uh, uh, that um, was a huge yeah, going to help on the budget quite a bit. Done very well, and uh, and on land that really we had no other use for, so uh, right. even better, even better. And uh, speaking of that, uh, uh, I'll jump ahead a little bit here. Now we we had the DPW win the other day. And uh, we met with uh, Director McGee and uh, a couple of his team members, uh, Paul Vito and Alan Finney and uh, our new Tim uh, Slowicki. No, I knew I was going to butcher that one. Tim, we'll call him Tim for we'll today. We'll call him Tim because uh, I'm not going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Tim Slowicki is an old softball friend of mine. But uh, so Tim, Tim's with us now. He's our highway superintendent. And uh, but we were talking about the, the landfill and all mm -hmm. the uh, things going on down at the landfill. And uh, Bob and his, and his guys have done a great job over the uh, last couple of years kind of creating some new opportunities for the DPW. We've got, uh, you know, we're producing materials there that uh, either we're selling off to commercial users or uh, using in our road programs, you know, that kind of the, the, the base for uh, road material, um, the subsurface program. Um, we're creating a, a lot of loom, uh, mulch, uh, wood chips. And uh, if you go to the DPW website, um, which you can get to through virtualnorfork.org again, um, you can look at a, the fee schedule for all those materials. And you can, you know, if you're if you're a sticker holder for the transfer station, you can get it at a at a discounted price. Um, but it's so it's also open to any resident to go there and, mm -hmm. and buy it. Uh, you know, you can get deliveries of uh, yards of loom, and it's. And from the last time we compared prices, it was substantially below the, what you can get from some of the commercial dealers around town. So I highly recommend that uh, you know you guys check out check out the materials yeah, down uh, at the I, DPW. I, and I can speak firsthand. I'm a sticker holder, and I uh, needed some loom this year, and I got four truckloads of loom, and I can tell you it was at least half the price, if not less, mm. than what I had purchased in the past through through private uh, private sources. So I th it's it's not a huge money maker, but it's it's just an example of how we're trying to take advantage of all the resources we have. Um, Bob's done a terrific job in uh, getting very creative yep. uh, about how uh, pretty much everything that goes in there provides some long-term benefit to us in some way, either through revenue, through recycling, or reusing the material. Um, the rock walls that uh, we were going to talk a little bit about roads too, but some of the rock walls that you're seeing going up around Norfolk, that, that's all coming from the landfill. Yep. <laughs> you know, when we, we uh, break up some of this material, we reuse it, and um, a lot of folks aren't aware of that. We've got a... Uh, um, which kind of leads me into the roads, just briefly yeah. if I can. <coughs> you know, there that's a topic you're, you're never going to win, um, and we're never going to meet all the needs of our roads because um, we have a lot of needs. But I wanted folks to know that we, we do spend somewhere between four and five hundred thousand dollars a year on road maintenance. Um, not, as, not enough. We'd like to spend more, but it, it is a meaningful contribution. And Bob has uh, rethought, if you will, or sort of redesigned our entire road um, 
maintenance process. Um, we're not just filling them, if you will. We're, right. we're removing the surface, uh, redoing them, patching it in a much more efficient way so it lasts a lot longer. But we've been focusing a lot lately, and hopefully some of you folks have seen them, uh, trying to make some of the intersections that are dangerous in town less dangerous. <laughs> um, some Either. examples of that are down on Seekonk Street. Uh, you may, those of you that come up north in Diamond, you all know that horrendous corner that's right there up from Stony Brook. Um, if you're down there today, you'll, you'll notice there's a beautiful stone wall and how much that's been cut back so that it, it, it's far less dangerous than it was. Uh, some of the work down on Marshall Street, the stone wall and the intersection up on Everett Street. Uh, Bob's done a great job. Yep. So um, we're, we're working at it, not as much as we need, but we're making some progress. He has done a great job, and, he's, and we're very fortunate to have a mason on the... Uh, uh, one of our DPW workers also is a mason on the weekends uh, in his own business, but uh, we get the use of his services during the day. Yeah. So he has done a great job with those uh, walls. Um, wanted to get back to uh, the Municipal Housing Trust. I know you've been a uh, right. trustee since the trust was formed. Uh, I was with you for a little while, but I was able to escape. A, but, a, uh, moment, a moment of weakness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, so been, it's, it's been a labor of love. Um, might be helpful just to, we have a few more minutes here just to share with people why, why we have the Municipal Housing Trust. I mean, when I came on the board a while ago, um, the town did not have an affordable housing plan filed with the state. Affordable housing plan, the, the state mandates that towns try to reach a 10% affordable housing stock in their community. Uh, Norfolk is nowhere close to that. We're about three. About three, right. If, if you don't have a plan in place, um, the state can allow a developer to come in and uh, create what we call an unfriendly 40B. Uh, there's been one in Walpole. Um, some of you may have been aware that recently Medfield, a town that you would not think it would happen in, you'd think they'd have an affordable housing plan in place, uh, did not. And there is an unfriendly development going into Medfield that the state has approved. They can't stop it. Um, and so we did file uh, an affordable housing plan with a uh, lot of help from a lot of volunteers. Uh, did a tremendous job in getting that pulled together. And we, the town approved the formation of the Municipal Housing Trust. The purpose of the trust is to find and create opportunities for single family homes in the town of Norfolk um, for affordable, affordable homes for families. Um, there's a lottery process in place to do that. For years we didn't have any success, mostly because of the pricing of homes in town and the pricing of lots uh, kind of put them out of our reach. So if there's been one moderately good thing, if that's the right way to say it, I'm not sure it is, but uh, that, that's happened with a reduction in the home prices, it has allowed the trust to find some opportunities to develop some of these. And um, just in the last two years, we, are now, we have now contributed eight single family homes to the inventory. Uh, not only is this the right thing to do, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, morally. It's, it's just, to me, the right thing to create these opportunities for people. Uh, but it also protects the town. Uh, it, it ensures we buy time, if you will. It not only increases our stock, but <coughs> if someone were to come into our community and want to create a sort of an unwelcome opportunity where they might bring in, most towns solve their affordable housing problem, <coughs> by the way, through apartments, not yeah. through single family homes. So if you can envision uh, a 250 apartment complex somewhere near the center of our town, I don't think most of us would find that uh, something we'd uh, find appealing <laughs> and not to mention the, the strain it would put on our schools and other resources. So this is really uh, what the Municipal Housing Trust is there to do, to, to find single family opportunities, to create more opportunity for housing that's affordable for folks. People that go into these homes, uh, we just held, recently held a lottery, they're, they're teachers, they're firefighters, they're policemen. Um, you know, the, this is not Section 8 homing. This no, homes, this uh, the, 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 if you get a chance to drive by Gumps, that home is pretty well <coughs> finished now. Uh, we tried to replicate the, the cape that was there, yep. uh, and it's, it's really going to be a beautiful home. And the other homes are four-bedroom colonials that are going up on that property uh, that will fit right in with the neighborhood. Uh, they're, they're very nice homes. So, you guys uh, have done a great job. And I know you bought it, the trust bought a house up on Old Popular Attic. We did, yeah. Uh, cleaned that up a little bit and yep. uh, have turned that around. And then uh, another house down on Merrill Lake. Um, uh, actually, it, it, it was a tear down and rebuild. Um, so that, that one is underway. And so you guys have done a great job. And We've got uh, one down at 82 Main Street that's taken us a lot longer than we wanted to. Because uh, uh, one of the things that we're finding as we go through this is we're learning as we go. You know, I mean, there's really no blueprint for this. Uh, yeah. we're, we're one of the uh, first towns to do this. Uh, and um, we've traded into some areas where there's a learning curve for us. And, 
we're documenting it. We're building a pretty solid business plan that'll be transferable to others. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a good, hard, good two years. You yeah. know, I, we we judge it by the results, and the results have been good. It's really so, been a learning curve. Yeah, that it has. Well, I know we're getting kind of finished, but I thought one place, Jack, that might be helpful uh, just to kind of tie this together would be if you have any updates on. Uh, we got a beautiful new school. Absolutely. Uh, with a great ribbon cutting ceremony we had, that was just great, and um, uh, you've been on that building committee. You've devoted a lot of time, a lot of hours to uh, making this happen, as have a lot of other volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, along with your other duties and the other 17 committees we got you on, <laughs> uh, we, we keep you out most nights. Um, so, and I'm not getting thank you notes from your family. No, I just want you to know that. Uh, but maybe you can just share in closing some of the highlights or any sure. information on uh, the new school. Sure, absolutely. The uh, new school, has, it, it's up, obviously up and running. Uh, we opened it in September for uh, the new school year. Uh, it's uh, about 200,000 square feet, same as, really same as the old school, but much, obviously much better designed. Anybody that had been in the Freeman uh, <coughs> Centennial School knew that it was just a long, winding layout. Um, this is a much more efficient layout. Uh, they've got a wing for each of the grades, uh, two levels. they got fourth and fifth, and uh, third and sixth, I guess. And uh, so the, the school's up and running. We've got a beautiful new gymnasium in there. Um, available obviously for the kids but also designed so we can have uh, adult leagues and community leagues uh, using the gym which they're already using. We've got a cafetorium so we've got a uh, 300 uh, seat area in the cafeteria that also has a stage um, that we used for the ribbon cutting so if people were fortunate enough to get to the ribbon cutting um, they saw that room uh, but that'll be a room that we can use for a lot of different purposes and actually we're going to have the fall town meeting. I was going to mention that. Yeah. Um, in the cafeteria at the Freeman Kennedy that'll be November 29th. It's the Thursday after Thanksgiving so right. people should remember that. It's usually we have it on Tuesday but we're going to have it on Thursday this year. Mm -hmm. And the election will be held there. The election on November 6th will yeah. be there and uh, school will be closed so uh, the, the uh, cafeteria will be used for the election. Um, We've still got some more work to do outside of the building. Inside of the building, I think we're you know 99% done, just doing some punch item uh, things. Uh, outside, we're gonna there's gonna be some more paving being done over the next uh, month and a half um, before the election. Um, we've got some field space still being developed out closer to Boardman Street. Obviously, the front part of the Freeman School still needs to come down. Um, there. Uh, it's, that's probably been the kind of the one sore spot with the developer. They're a little slow take, uh, with the demolition, slower than we would like. But uh, other than that, they have done a fantastic job. I think everybody is uh, very pleased with the, the building. Um, you know, knock on wood, so far we're uh, on time and under budget. So uh, the project has been a huge success. And as you said, there are many volunteers, too many to mention right now, but uh, the school building committee and uh, the school administration has done a great job. And we thank the, the voters in Norfolk, the residents, for supporting the school. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's their school. Absolutely. That, it all belongs to them. <laughs> we're, so. we're just getting a lend lease opportunity here for yeah. a while. Um, well, I think we touched on all the things we wanted to. Um, I think so. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you for being Pleasure here. It was be very here. helpful. And um, I'll let you say goodbye. Well, thank you for joining us on Conversation Corner. Uh, this has been Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Jim Lehan, and myself, Jack Hathaway. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you.